BC, only two losses, both of them coming on the road. The Lions won the coin toss, decided to take the football. Great crowd here in Mosaic. It should be a good football game tonight. Family night tonight here in Saskatchewan. Lots of kids in the crowd. Let's get this in goal. Mother gets this underway, and this will be taken by Williams just inside his own 20. All the way back, bounce off one tackle. And eventually, on a second or third effort, wrapped up around the 35. What a game for Vernon Adams a week ago against the Calgary Stampeders. Four touchdown passes in that one. 322 yards passing. A win against the Calgary Stampeders. And as mentioned, Keon Hatcher is number one target. But he has done a nice job all season long of distributing the ball and getting all his receivers involved. He was injured the last time these two teams met in week seven. Last week, as Glenn mentioned, his 11th career 300-yard game tied a career high with four touchdown passes as well. Starts here on his own 35 for the Lions. Adams looking to throw down the field immediately. And that one falls incomplete. Hatcher came up looking for a flag on some contact as that ball arrived, but won't get it. One change for the Lions up front. Their left tackle will be Chris Schluger, who is a former Montreal Alouette. His first game for Jarrell Broxton. And there is Keon Hatcher. Nine catches, 170 yards against the Calgary Stampeders. We have four of the top ten. Four receivers tonight in this game that are in the top ten in the league. Hatcher, Hollins, Bain, and Jones. Those four names. Second and ten after the incompletion from the BC 35. Riders trying to force an early two and out. Adams under pressure, taken down. Ball pops out of the Riders trying to hop on it. What a start for Saskatchewan if they recover and they do. Early mistake from VA and the Riders are all over it. It was against Saskatchewan in BC that Vernon Adams was injured. Dane Evans took over for him. The Lions won that game, but pressure, the pocket collapse on Vernon Adams here. Not sure who got their hand on it. It wasn't really blitz pressure, although it looked like Larry Dean was spying Vernon Adams, stepped up, made the hit, and that's when the ball came out. Yeah, Micah Johnson in there as well. And eventually that ball pops loose. And what field position for Jake Dolagala. Second career start. Has the ball on the visitors 31. Looks to throw here far side. Man wide open. That is complete down inside the 20. And a little bit further for Emelis. Well, comes out slinging it, and he goes out to Emelis at that wide receiver spot, having a breakout season, closing in on 500 yards at the halfway point. That, of course, keeps him on pace for a 1,000-yard season. Nice move after the catch. 16 yards to number 19 on the first completion of the ball game. Down to the BC 15 inside the red zone for the first time today. Dola Gala to the end zone. Just short of it, back up to where it's touchdown. Schaefer Baker, my goodness, a lot happening there. And what a start for the Riders. He's back, baby. Almost a thousand yard season, just shy of it. Over 900 for Kean Schaefer Baker a year ago. And it was a ton of yards after the catch, but what a dart throw in a tight window for Dola Gala to get it to 89. And he gets involved early here in Saskatchewan in his first game. Can you script this start any better for the Riders? Defense causes a turnover. Dola Gala, two passes, touchdown to the guy, returning to the lineup for the first time this season. A dream start for the Riders. Dola Gala, Schaefer Baker rolls his way to a touchdown. First catch of the season goes for a major. One quick yards from Dola Gala. Finished off by Schaefer Baker. And the Riders on top, 7-0 early. Williams takes this at the 6. Oh, hammered down just outside the 25 by Onyeka. Solid 
special teams work. That early momentum, the turnover on defense turns into seven, and then the special teams fly down the field. That'll get some energy going early for the home side here. This time they start at their own 26, trailing by seven. Faking the handoff, Adams on the roll to his right, down the field. Hollins comes back for it and hauls it in. A nice throw and catch from Adams and Hollins. Yeah, and a good call to get, you know, settle things down offensively in the passing game to get Vernon Adams on the bootleg, out and around on the edge where he has a choice to either run or throw it and a 15-yard gain into Hollins. Nice ball placement there from VA. Team leading 57th catch of the year for Hollins, the second-year man out of Eastern Illinois. Up to the BC 41. Adams down the field again, looking for Hatcher laid out. Couldn't get it against this Riders starting defense. Well, they rank number one in passing yards allowed in the CFL, and they've been better at it since Anthony Lanier returned to the lineup. Putumata at defensive end instead of tackle. There is their leader, Larry Dean, who's already got a forced fumble in this one. And then you go back into the secondary, and Amari Henderson has two picks, one against the BC Lions a couple weeks ago. And his other one came in their last game as well so he's hot coming into this one second and ten for Adams three options to his right three options to his left Adams under pressure again near side katoy has got it straight up the sideline and a pretty good effort but I think he's going to be marked just short of a first down by about a yard yeah and if it's a yard or a yard and a half is a big difference for that guy right there, Rick Campbell, and his decision here. It's almost two, but where they spotted the third down marker. Yeah. Very long one, if you want to say that. So Flintoff will come out to kick it away. And of course, Mario Alford dangerously lurking. Back by his own 10. He's taken a couple to the house already this season from the 40 flint off high kick alford waits takes it after a 49 yard boot bc downfield nowhere for mario alford to be set free nice start for dola gala just his second career start and he made the most of it here in nine injured and even as a third string guy you always got to be ready well, Mason Fine and Jake Dolagala were, were neck and neck coming out of training camp. And, you know, it was uh, sort of a pick em as to who would be the backup to Trevor Harris. So they have great confidence in Dolagala, and he looked good in those first two throws. Starts here on his own 27. Jamal Morrow in behind him. And they will hand it off to Morrow. Push straight ahead just outside the 25. And Morrow, a big piece of this Riders offense. Well, Matthew Betts against Eric Lofton and Colin Campbell will be matchups depending on which side that Betts lines up on. Ten sacks on the league, still leads the league. And there is Keon, Keon Schaefer-Baker back and has a touchdown already in this one. And we're not even five minutes in. Dola Gala, five-man rush. Has a completion just outside the 30. And that should be enough for a first down as he gets it right back into the hands of Schaefer Baker. Getting him involved right away. He's coming off the hip surgery. And, you know, I think it, 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 you have to think, sort of temper your expectations when a guy's in his first game. But he just seems like he's picked up where he left off. Two catches already on two targets. First and 10 for the Riders from their own 33. Morrow again, straight ahead, and a really nice push on first down against this BC defense. 
to get Sioni to him a back up front. A defensive end missed last week against the Calgary Stampeders. Mentioned Betts, he hasn't had a sack in three games. Maybe tonight he gets back on track. Bola Cumble fourth in the league in defensive plays. And Edwards Cooper, Jalen Edwards Cooper back at corner missed last week. Betts last sack, as Glenn mentioned, was actually against the Riders out in Vancouver. Second and four. Gola Gala gets it away quickly. That's up for grabs. Almost intercepted. Peters working there against Emelis. Knocked that one away. Yeah, and you can see that Saskatchewan is going to game plan against Matthew Betts as well, who's right down here at the bottom of your screen. And they're going to get a little help from running back Jamal Morrow to even get this ball out of there and out of the hands of Jake Dolagala. So a little chip block there from tailback. Give that defensive or offensive tackle a little bit of help. And that ball in the secondary a little batted around and almost picked off. First incompletion of the game for Dolagala. Or Zach from his own 30, Williams slides underneath it. 44 yard kick, a flag here as Williams is eventually wrapped up for pretty much no gain on the return. Keon Hatcher. Ha uh, Keon Hatcher kind of really emerged onto the scene last year for the BC Lions and coming off just a tremendous game against Calgary. Well, missed the first three games of the season and has caught up and is in the top 10 that quickly. And after nine for 170, you know, I think what makes him great is his versatility. He can run every route on the tree. I mean, most of the receivers in that core for BC can. But this guy can do it all and get behind you. He's got great speed. He's a route runner. And the hands are certainly there. He's at the top of your screen right now. BC from their own 42 after a no yards penalty on the return. And Mizell gets stuffed up after picking up about four. Asked him, you know, when was the last time you had a game? 170. He said, you know, I had a pretty good game with the Raiders in the preseason, but I guess that, I'm not going to count that one because it was a preseason game, and he goes, you know what, probably high school. <laughs> yeah, dial it back quite a way. He had to dial it back to get the 170, but he was the guy last week. Who's the guy for Vernon Adams here tonight? Well, that's the thing. They've got a lot of options. Six different receivers with 275 yards or more this season. Here's one of them. Hollins has got it at the 40. Taken out on the play, but not after, not before, I should say. He picks up a big game, and BC marches down the field. Yeah, and, and Vernon Adams is pointing to himself, saying, if I throw that a little bit more accurately, probably give you a chance to run and make a move. But it made him come back a little bit to the ball. It was in between the deep zone and the underneath hook or curl zone. Big 28-yard gain down the rail. Moncrief was there to finish him off. First time today, the Lions looking dangerous from the rider 36. Adams steps up down the field towards the end zone. Broken up. It hung up there forever. Lucky Whitehead was waiting, but Jeremy Clark got there in time. Lucky Whitehead runs this go route, and Jeremy Clark keeps his composure. He'll hang on, he'll keep his composure, he'll wait, he'll wait, he'll wait, and then plays the ball when he reads the eyes of the receiver in Lucky Whitehead. When those eyes get big and he starts to reach for the ball with his right hand, that's when Jeremy Clark shoots the left hand up to knock it down. Third good beat. of the season for Jeremy Clark. Second and 10 now. Adams. Over the middle has a completion down by the 25 and that's back to Hollins for 11 yards in a first down. Well, that's that's precise route running by Alexander Hollins. I mean, this this is Hollins who, who really he's this this look at how accurate he's got to get right to the stick and then come back so that he right on that yard line is exactly where that first down mark, marker was and he gets forward progress. And a new set. Three catches, 43 yards for Hollins already in this game. 
One-on-one -on -one at the bottom of your screen, working there against Clark. Adams goes the other way to Hatcher for his first catch of the game. Takes it just inside the 20. You know, I just, I, I can't say enough about how Rick Campbell has managed his quarterback situation since becoming the head coach of the BC Lions. I mean, he had Nathan Rourke, who's doing a nice job down in Jacksonville. He's got, you know, he's got Vernon Adams out, how he empowers the young quarterbacks. This is the best of the last couple of games I've seen Vernon Adams play in his entire career. He, just, he gives him the keys, but he also empower, empowers him to say, hey, it's your team. Go out and run the offense. And Vernon Adams is seeing it. And he's got weapons everywhere he looks. Hatcher moves in behind him. McKinnis there as well, the former rider. VA looks to his left, throws it. Completion. And a first down into the hands of Justin McKinnis. Vernon Adams, number one in the CFL in completion percentage. Tied with Zach Kolaris with four 300-yard passing games. He had that one. He, he had the one in Toronto where he was... That was a bad one. Yeah, that was a really bad one. Put yeah. that one aside, but outside of that, boy, I, I think this is the best football I've seen Vernon Adams play. 58.3% inside the red zone this year for the Lions. They'll give it to Mizell right up the middle. Takes it down inside the 10. It'll be second and rather reasonable for the visitors. Both these teams like to get their tailbacks going in this. Mizell for BC. Jamal Morrow for Saskatchewan. I'm sure they maintain balance. These D lines are too good. You just let them just get after the quarterback and pass him downs all the time, they're going to start to sack the quarterbacks in a big way. So you got to keep that balance in there and keep their attention. Eighth play of the drive for the Lions as they look to get on the board for the first time today. Three options up to the left for Adams. That's where he looks. That's where he throws. Hollins did not get a foot down. Got his hands on it and hauled it in, but was out of bounds. Third and five. That was close, Dustin, right on the sideline. Good timing throw from Vernon Adams. Steps up in the pocket, gets it outside. Does he get his foot in bounds? Catch is made now. No. Right foot on the white stripe. Good call by the official. Right on the spot. Only need one, but that one was out of bounds. So they'll trot out Sean White for a chip shot. He's perfect inside 50 so far this season to get the BC Lions on the board right down the middle. That is 21 in a row for Sean White. BC looking to pull even. Just missed. VA get another crack at it. If he knew who the legendary Cookie Gilchrist was, and he said, I actually do, because he played with my grandpa on the Buffalo Bills when they were in the AFL back in the day. Dole Gallis said he was very close to his grandpa, Al B. Miller, who unfortunately passed away at the end of last season. But he did tell us that's the reason he plays this game and the reason he fell in love with it, and also the reason that he continues to try to work to be the starter of this team. Guys? Oh, he's getting a great opportunity here today, that's for sure. And has a completion out to Jones, and Jones makes one man miss and is very close to a first down as Dolagala getting the start today. Harrison Fine also starting this year, and here's a look at a lot of young starters. A lot of young starters. A lot of young starters this year, which is an opportunity for these young guys to get, get in there and make a name for themselves and start their journey and, and start to get people talking about them as if they need to have their own team at some point as, you know, their journey continues. And, you know, Matt, Matt Dunn Dunnigan asked the question. There's Trevor Harris up in the booth trying to help out every chance he gets. But at some point, you got to get young quarterbacks to learn the game, understand the nuance. And Matty was asking at the beginning in the, you know, in the pregame, are they going to cut him loose and let him throw the football and play with confidence? Or are they going to... Are they going to try and, you know, make sure he's very conservative to not turn it over, things like that? I think you cut him loose. That's what I mentioned about Rick Campbell. Rick Campbell has empowered whomever he's had at quarterback. And remember, he was questioned big time when it came to Nathan Rourke. It was like, what? You're starting a Canadian kid? You know, now, 
you know and now and, and, and Rick Campbell said yeah we're giving him the keys and look what he did and now he's done the same with Vernon Adams so you know again Craig Dickinson is he going to do that we've got a lion down on the field I that, that's Nathan Cherry second year defensive lineman out of the University of Saskatchewan well, yeah I, I I think so far Dola Gala has been throwing it to you know the read that throw for to Key and Schaefer Baker for the touchdown as good as good as it gets I mean that's a dig route a tight window and throws it for a touchdown I know he was in plus territory but that was confidence and go get it he started four or five for 48 yards and a touchdown so let's let's see what happened to Nathan Jerry here he got outside he was trying to make that tackle on Morrow on the outside a little friendly fire which it often is this look here his left leg just planted in an awkward awkward situation or awkward position guy on that defensive line for the Lions second and nine now from the rider 51 for Dola Gala flushed out of the pocket on the run to his right was looking to get it into the hands of Bain for the first time today he got turned around a bit couldn't hang on Not a bad idea to try to get it to Sean Bean, who's having a monster year here in his first season with the Riders. Corsack. We'll let this fly from around his own 40. Terry Williams awaits the punt. Tracks it down at the 12, and he gets absolutely wow. destroyed just inside the 20. Ouch! And Craig Dickinson told us this week he's going to dress T.J. Brunson. Said, I just want you guys to know. That, oh. He said, I want you guys to know we're dressing a new linebacker. He's going to play on the team. Thanks, Coach, for the heads up. Ladies and gentlemen, T.J. Brunson. Yes, there he is. How about, how about Terry Williams meet T.J. Yeah. Brunson? Oh, there's wow. Williams. He seems to be okay. They've tracked him down a couple of times already on Yucca earlier. He's going to back him up. This ball just outside their five on the six. A lot of field to work with. Adams gets it away. Has a completion for a first down. And the big fella plowing ahead there for some extra yards. Javon Katoy, who's catching the ball at over a 90% clip this season. Yeah, we're just getting started, I think, with Javon Katoy. I mean, he, he we're just scratching the surface on what he's capable of. And that, that play right there is a get you a little room play, just a little breathing room. That's your breathing room play when you're backed up like that. Puts Katoy up to 290 yards the season for the 26 year old they give it to Whitehead takes it just outside the 20 and no further that's actually I believe his first carry of the season a little fly sweep underneath trying a little misdirection offensively one of the rising stars in the coaching ranks has been Jordan Maximic for the BC Lions whether he back to his early Edmonton days as a quarterback coach worked with Mike Riley when he was the MOP of the league worked with Nathan Rourke and now Vernon Adams no game for lucky second and ten for BC from their own 21 pressure coming Adams in trouble taken down again Riders defense gets home Miles Brown among others there to smother Vernon Adams 
Linebackers are creeping towards the line of scrimmage. Larry Dean, the top of your screen. They're just they're closing in. They're getting close to the line. They're trying to. Got Dulkey off the edge from the safety spot. Trying to collapse that pocket. Force a mistake. Clinton. Just outside of his own end zone. Deep kick here. Alford's got to hustle back. What a kick. Alford catches it. Stumbles after a 67-yard kick. And he'll take it back out. Just shy of the 35. What a kick from Flintoff. Huge punt. Backed up in your own end. Riders hoping to maybe flip the field there, but Flintoff had some other ideas. And 15 minutes in the books. The Riders strike early. Bam lead after one quarter, seven to three against the BC Lions. He's leading the Lions seven to three. And I guess maybe the surprising thing, BC's high flying offense, just three points, couple sacks for the Riders. Defense really active here. Yeah, I think, well, I think Saskatchewan understands one thing. They, they've got this game, then they have a bye, then they have Winnipeg back to back. So, you know, they know the importance of this game and they're playing with great physicality right now. We're seeing their defense with a couple of sacks, special teams. Yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. Cover, they're cover teams are bringing the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a rough ride for Terry Williams so far in this ball game. So a physical effort from the Riders so far. And this will be a big one for them. Calgary with a loss this week. For the Riders, a win would push them to five and five on the season, heading into that bye. Dola Gala works from his own 33, fakes the handoff near side, wide open is Bain. Bain makes a nice move, eventually wrapped up by Quincy Moget extra yards there on that spin and just shy of a first down when you see trips to the field like that you usually see it a lot more spread out than you do for this formation for the riders their, their, their trips to the field is really bunched up and the reason for that is to get Bain to sneak out in behind the first two almost a little rough and now lunging ahead that'll be a first down for Saskatchewan Bain had 10 catches when these teams met in week seven, caught all 10 balls that were thrown his way. And there he sits right behind Austin Mack, who's having an excellent season, and Dalton Schoen. Yeah, and Hollins is right behind Hatcher, so there's your top guys in the league. I, you know, I think Sean Bain and, and Tevin Jones have, have sort of elevated themselves into the elite category in the league in a short amount of time. Heavily targeted by whoever's at quarterback so far this year. Now Dola Gala down the field, looking for Bain, broken up, incomplete. TJ Lee, the veteran, was there working against Bain. Nice matchup. And, and Bain, I thought he was going to sneak in and, and catch this low. Looked like he, he tries to sort of inside move. He's got the leverage he wants, and now he's got to reach underneath as he's kind of fading away. And TJ Lee again times up that look, puts the right hand up. That's a good defensive play by Mitch. Second and 10. And they avoid disaster in their own territory here. And we'll have a chance to kick it away. Does Matthew Betts get back on the board here? They move him inside. He shoots the gap. Working one-on-one -on -one with Logan Furlan. Inside swim move. He gets to Dolagala. First forced fumble of the year for Betts. Terry Williams waiting back at the top of your screen. And for his sake, probably hope he did not get absolutely blown up again. Takes it at the 25. Williams this time wrapped up after a short return. Matthew Betts been a terror for offenses all year. Nice spot heading into next week. BC trailing seven 
to three, averaging just shy of 26 points per game, are the BC Lions coming into this one. Now they'll toss it out. Mizell nowhere to go. Not even back to the line of scrimmage. They'll take a loss here. Vernon Adams is on pace tonight for another 300-yard passing game. And when you take a look at the top passers yardage per game, Vernon Adams up there at 267, just behind Cody Fajardo in Montreal. And Zach Polaris isn't far away. Chad Kelly having a big year. But, I, you know, I think if he keeps playing this way, you've got to put Vernon Adams in the conversation. And the MOP. The numbers he's putting up, it's that one game with the six interceptions that kind of lingers in there. But outside of that, he's just been fantastic to watch so far this year. Adams gets this one away, and that falls incomplete. Hatcher was there, and Hatcher is slow to get up. Yeah, that was as a, a rider down on the field as well. There's a collision there between two riders. Hatcher reaching for the ball, and that's Amari Henderson. I was going to say, it looks like one of the DBs went up and, and left of your screen here. Ooh, oh man. Not supposed to bend like that. Hatcher was coming across, didn't really see him, and, and Henderson kind of stopped and went up for this ball, didn't he? Yeah, layered crossing route here, and he's going for the ball, and then just, it was just a collision, didn't see each other. Anderson having an excellent season for the Riders coming into this game. 22 tackles, a couple of interceptions, one last week, one against BC. Last time they played, four knockdowns as well, and really established himself as a big, important piece of this Riders defense. And we will step away as they continue to take a look at Amari Henderson down on the field for Saskatchewan. Not only is up and off, he trotted off the field after they looked at him for quite some time while he was laying down. Yeah, he, and he's gonna, you know, take some time there and be evaluated. He'll go in the tent on the sideline. I Good to see him run off. Flintoff is able to haul that in. Alford takes it after a 49-yard kick. Mario Alford trying to stretch it out on the far side of the field. But what a job by the BC Lions special teams cover team to make sure there was nowhere for Alford to turn that upfield. Both, both teams playing well on the cover teams early in this one. Physical cover teams for Saskatchewan, and that was a great, great job covering and stringing that one out because Mario Alford can get it done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's no denying that. That guy can go. Always a threat. Dola Gala, 5 of 8, 58 yards and a touchdown to start. Thank you very much for joining us here in Regina on a Sunday of week 11. And Moral contained here. Both running backs have been relatively held in check so far in this game. And there is Jamal Morrow and Mizell among the top six in rushing leaders this season. Dedrick Mills had the big one against Toronto and that Calgary win in Calgary. Brady Oliveira leads the pack, having another great season. Oliveira almost at 300 receiving yards as well in that high-powered Bombers offense. Lions going to bring some pressure. Dolagala under heat. Bounces it off the head of Morrow as he's hammered down at the end of the play. Yeah, full-on pressure. No time to even set up the screen. In the screen, what you're trying to do offensively is, is block it up for a two or three count and then let the guys get deep. The defensive line and linebackers rushing. And this time, Dolagala was like, he didn't have any seconds there to even get the screen set up to Jamal Morrow. And that's timing on the snap count as well from the Lions defense to time that up and hit it on the fly. After the touchdown to open the game, this is a fourth straight punt for the Riders who do lead 7-3. to three. This is going to bounce. Williams takes it on the one hop. And he is wrapped up at 
after a very short return. While well, Keon Hatcher coming in off just a huge game last week. For more on him, let's send it back down to Britt Dorn. Yeah, he's somebody his coach described as someone you want on your side of the ball. He said, when I'm standing on the sideline, I'm happy number fours on my team. And you mentioned it, Suits. We asked him, have you ever had a game like that before? And he said, nope, maybe all the way back to high school I did. But I asked VA about him and the type of player he is. And he said, oh, that guy knows every position. Sometimes he thinks he even knows quarterbacks. So I asked him, well, what do you mean by that? He said, every day after practice, he challenges a player to an accuracy contest. So I said, well, do you ever go head to head against him, Vernon? And he told me, well, no, because that wouldn't be fair. <laughs> For who? Well, I was going to say, what, what if you lose, right? You can't be the quarterback losing an accuracy contest. No, I, but I, I, I get it when you want to compete all the time, and that's what Keon Hatcher is all about. I mean, you know, whether it's in your receiver group, trying to do it in practice, or, you know, let's let's go and play cards on the plane on the way, or how, whatever it is, you want to compete. Create that environment in your locker room. Lions on their own 35. Adams, far side, lucky Whitehead, and he holds it in before he's knocked out of bounds. Longest play of the game, 29 yards. Lucky Whitehead is still trying to get, still trying to get that 30-yarder. He, he hasn't had a 30-yard reception. This one's a yard short, just shy. <laughs> Deontay Williams there to finish him off. Nice job to secure that. It just better it's, receiver. It's it's wild that Lucky Whitehead doesn't have a 30-yarder yet this season, and we're at the halfway point. That's crazy to me. It's the classic he's due conversation, right? Here's Adams, fakes the handoff, turns down the field for Holland. He's got it wide open all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, BC, and they go on top for the first time today. Nick Marshall looks at Deontay Williams as this ball in the air and they both kind of throw their hands in the air and shrug that's what we call a bust in the business in the back end and, and alexander holland says thank you very much you need 13 wide open like that and you're gonna give up a 30 plus not to not to whitehead this time but to holland Gives him 100 yards on the nose with nine minutes remaining in the second quarter. 46-yard touchdown strike to Hollins. That's his fourth major of the season. Vernon Adams, look at this, drops it in there. Nobody close. <laughs> Take a nap. You earned it. Secondary. It looks like it's just a straight cover three with three deep here, one in the flat there. That's Nick Marshall. Now watch as the play develops. It looks like Deontay Williams sits too shallow. Stop it there. Now he's supposed to have the outside third. He doesn't have it. Nick Marshall's trying to recover to it. Watch the reaction of number 24 as the ball's in the air here, right here. Hands in the air saying, uh-oh, what happened? Oh, man, that's me. Wait, that was my guy? Right? Yeah, exactly. Alford with a good burst. Double teamed and taken down just shy of his own 35. And that's where Dola Gala will come out trailing for the first time this evening. Well, he started showing some great confidence in that BC defense. Again, top ranked defense in the league with a veteran secondary. And Davis Sanchez talked about in the pregame show about how this secondary will route read and they'll jump routes and got a little more conservative as the game's gone on here. Starts on his own 33. Pressure from the Lions. Cuts it away quickly and a nice catch by Bain as he's wrapped up. Tossed down by TJ Lee, but seven yards with some pressure in his face. We also saw Kean Schaefer Baker playing early in the first few series and then they sat him down for a couple here just to make sure they ease him back in that is a big catch by Bain. that was in behind him tj lee not too far away second and three try to keep this offense on the field here no 
hand it off. Moro straight ahead, spun down. Very close to a first down. This will depend on the spot. It might be marked just short. Either way, I don't think there's any question, Craig Dickinson will go for it here. It looks even less than a yard, so. Pipkin into the game. Yeah, just to try to take care of business. Just acquired for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, veteran Antonio Pipkin. We've seen him a few different teams throughout his CFL career. The injuries at quarterback, the Riders had to find somebody that knows the game. Aids just shy of a yard, pushing ahead. Eventually thrown back. But I think that forward progression should have it. And get another look at it. A little hesitation there, but he did get over the top. You take a look down. He just got to get to that yard marker in front. A little extension there. And yeah, I think he forward progress got him. Aladdick almost stopped him initially, but Pipkin found his way through. Fresh set of downs from the 44. Moro tried to cut it back. Flag as he is tossed down at the 45 after a very short pickup. Siona Tavis is in an all-out brawl with one of the rider old linemen as that play was developing. See what the flag is, or Saskatchewan number 64, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. Evan Johnson called on the hold, that'll back him up, first and 20. He's right in here. Ground lock, he wasn't on to Hema. To Hema and Godwin were going at it. Chunk of this back. He's going to look to get it all back down the field for Amelis. Holy smokes! What a catch by Amelis! Goes up and gets it! And he gets it against one of the top defensive backs in the game in Gary Peters. We talk about the halfway mark and some outstanding players. I put Sam Emelis in the discussion as top Canadian. He climbs a ladder and rips it down there. That's a great catch. Puts Dolagala over 100 yards on the game. Seven for 11, 111, and a touchdown. Yeah, that throw from Dolagala was effortless. I mean, flick of the wrist, effortless. Got the big arm. Second catch of the game for Amelis. Highlight reel it. by Ryan. There it is. 46 big ones. Down to the BC 30. Dolagala gets it away. Over the middle. That's hauled in. Heavy pop at the end of the play. But first catch of the day for Jared Stearns. Well, that's a danger area. You're gonna have, you're gonna get hit in there. Two back-to-back -back throws from Dolagala. the needle just over Halatic, but in front of the safety and TJ Lee the halfback there's the hit coming Saskatchewan's in business here trailing by three they have the ball on the BC eight yard line looking to get the lead back Dola Gallo hands it off what a cut all the way to the end zone a touch to Marlboro second rushing touchdown of the and the Riders answer back. Jake Dolagala puts his hands up just after he hands the ball off here to Jamal Moore. Sevens are wild on this. Seven plays, 77 yards. Jamal Moore in for the touchdown. And after the extra point, seven on the board. But watch Dola, Dola Gala, number nine here. He gives the ball up, hands up, touchdown. Saw the great blocking and cut from Morrow. Yeah, the 
moment he cut to his left, Oligala knew that he was going the whole way. Eight yard touchdown to cap off that 77 yard drive. Author's extra point is through, and the Riders on top, 14 10. Jamal Morrow gets the goal, but Sam Emelis gets the assist with his big catch to set it up and give this offense some, some confidence. I mentioned the seven plays, they mixed it up, a little run pass, but the two big throws from Jake Dolagala, this one to Emelis, he climbs the ladder against Gary Peters, the best shutdown corners in the game, and rips it down, and then the one over the middle to Stearns. Another nice catch, knowing he's going to take a whack there from T.J. Lee. And then Morrow, big cut to his left. Blocking outstanding on the left side of the old line and untouched, 25, regain the lead. Watching that Emelis catch again. If he doesn't manage to high point that ball, Peters is probably able to make a play on it. it Absolutely. The one spot Gary Peters couldn't get his hand. Just a phenomenal play on a nice throw. And a little back and forth action here on Sunday at Mosaic. We got a good one. Williams just outside the 30. And still going. And now a pile up just outside the 35. Flags at the end of the play. Did this ball come loose? And do the riders have it? Where is it? The riders just picked it up and walked away with it. AJ Allen says it's over here. The officials gather together to figure out what just happened. Well, let's take another look at it. Okay. The ruling on the field is a fumble, Saskatchewan's ball. Campbell can challenge that with the way that Williams was tackled at the end of this. Not there. Everything's clean there and fine, but right here around the neck. And After the play, we have a 15-yard misconduct penalty on BC number 48. 15-yard penalty, first down. Okay, so they're ruling that that was after the ball was fumbled and the play was out. Excuse me, the ball was out. And that's when those flags came out. There was no flags on the tackle. There you can see the around the neck and just pulling Terry Williams backwards. And that, that was the late hit on, on Micah Tights. So nothing really that Rick Campbell can challenge there. Saskatchewan ball. They took advantage of the last time the Lions turned it over. This time they'll get it on the BC 21. With just over four minutes remaining in the half. A glorious opportunity for the Riders. Dolagala quickly gets it into the hands of Stearns, his second catch of the ball game, and we've got a few things to discuss, I think, for this crew at the half. Stick around for Kate. Well, I'll be interested to hear Maddie talk about Dolagala, too, because he was yeah. questioning, you know, how, how, are they going to let him just get out there and sling it? And we've seen some pretty good throws. He's kind of slinging nine. it, isn't he? He really is. A little bit of a lull there, but start is strong and is finishing the first half strong as well. Three-yard pickup on the completion to Stern, second and seven. Dolagala. Full advantage of turnovers. 
Gamba got turned around there, and Stearns was wide open. Lothar for one more, and the Riders on top, 21-10 against the 7-2 BC Lions. Yeah, it was Emmanuel Ragamba in, in coverage on Stearns. And Jarrett Stearns, really nice road running here. There's Ragamba, who's going to track him. But what he does, he takes a peek back to the quarterback. So stop it right there. He's looking right back right now to Dolagala. And that's when Stearns makes his little move to the inside. So Ragamba takes a peek. And as soon as he does, the receiver opens up. Gala, 10 of 14 for 154 yards and two touchdowns and jersey sales at halftime here at Mosaic will be through the roof. Riders played a stretch here of three in a row against the East. Back to the West against BC. And that'll be pretty happy with what they've seen so far. Williams coming off of a fumble on his last return is taken down again in about the same area of the field. This time he is able to hang on. Well, we talked about the physicality in this game and the Riders understanding the importance of it. And they're setting a the tone on special teams. That's Jackson Ford getting started on the cover team. Watch the hits that have been happening. Terry Williams is taking a beating, catching these pucks. And, I mean, just rocking his world on these punt returns. You want to be a punt returner? No, I don't. <laughs> you didn't hesitate there, my friend. <laughs> wow. Kick teams getting it done for Saskatchewan in this first half. Adams still moving to the right. Now he stops, looks down the field, and that one almost hauled in by McKinnis, but Donkey is there to bat it away at the last second. Well, that's a long way to go for Dalkey. I mean, he's in the middle, and he's got to get to a corner route. He gets there. He covers a lot of ground to make that play. Inside three minutes. Don't go anywhere. We've got a sensational battle between the Lions and the Riders at Mosaic. The special team setting the tone early. The list goes on and on. We might need to extend halftime, actually. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't go anywhere, lots to discuss. Gola Gala is 154, and two touchdowns are already career highs for him. Revis brings some pressure, Adams escapes, nice move, and now he's gonna slide ahead. Close to a first down, Moncrief was there to eventually force him to go down, and Adams gets up limping. The other That's leg. the other leg. Yeah, he's got a brace on that. He's going to have to go down here. Brace is on his left leg. And he looked fine. Right at the end there. Yeah, he feel his thigh? With... Watch. Kind of grabs his right thigh at the end of this play. I think Moncrief ends up landing on that inside leg. Moncrief, by the way, is playing halfback right now for Amari Henderson. We saw it leave a few series ago. He still hasn't returned. There's the Moncrief hit. Now Adams is diving forward, so it's it's clean hit. It, it, it looked like an elbow right, in, right into his quad. Is it a Charlie horse there? Yeah, it could be. could be. He is still down as they look at him. But if you saw, yeah, Moncrief's elbow kind of came right in, right to where they're looking at there. Well, they do have Dane Evans dressed, but Dom Davis will be the backup, according to Rick Campbell this week. Adams, the last time he played yep. the Riders, it was a Pete Robertson sack that caused the issue that has now led to the brace on his other leg. And now Dom Davis into the game. You did see Evans on the sideline warming up. Evans came into that game and led them to a 10-point victory. So we'll see how this plays out. 
He's coming off injury as well, though, Dean Evans. He is. And that would be, yeah, if Dean Evans wasn't coming off injury, he'd be out there. He'd right be the now. number two. So, yeah. so, wonder about Timer, the availability. Please reset the clock to 229. What's the availability of 17 right there? Takes a Timer, peek in to see reset how. the clock to 229. See how his teammate Vernon Adams is in the tent. They're examining him, so he wants to make take a look and make his own assessment and see is he a play away? Takes a quick little peek. For now, it'll be Dom Davis. He's thrown the ball 20 times this year. Nine completions, 74 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. I'll hand it off this time. Mizell bounces off the first tackle, but not get past the 40. A pickup of just two. Talk about the Riders and their and their defense against the pass. Their last loss in Montreal, which they filed away, is one of those ones that got away on them. Jason Shires' group wanted to play better against the run. So far tonight, they've done that. Seven yards of three carries for Mizell thus far. Second and seven. Early movement. Looked like it was Kent Perkins. Procedure. BC number 59. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. That is the right tackle, Kent Perkins. Second year out of Texas. This is a line for BC that's pretty much been intact all year. Schluger having to start at left tackle today. Roxton out. Which, by the way, is a great old line name. Chris Schluger. Schlugin away. He's out there Schluger. And, hey, we haven't mentioned him yet. No, and that's a good thing for an offensive line. Or a DB, by the way. Second and 12. BC on their own 35. Davis under pressure. Flag here as he gets out of the pocket. Finds Katoy. Nice little spin move by Katoy. Gets it up to about the 45. But is this a hold? Holding. BC 59. 10-yard penalty. Remains second down. Back to back for Kent Perkins. We just mentioned if we're talking about offensive linemen, it's it's often not great. And it's the back-to-back -back plays from Kent Perkins. Although we do show good blocks and things like that. Once again, that's not up to us, right? That's the guys in the truck. Just stay away from us. We don't need that heat. So second and 22. What do you got in the playbook for second and 22, coach? I'd say throw it deep. Okay. <laughs> We're going to see a check down to the tailback, aren't we? Wow. I see another flag here. I'm going to chalk this up if it's procedure again against the Lions. And start to factor in the crowd. Procedure, BC number 57. Five yard penalty, second down. Yeah, we just jinxed Schluger. Oh, that's on us. That yeah, one's on that's us. Definitely yeah. on us. Schluger on the other side. You know, the crowd noise, big factor here. Well, great crowd today at Bulls Well, it's family night. The family's out, kids playing, making it tough on Don Davis to get the ball snapped. The officials are having trouble hearing things as well. What Rick Campbell wants here is he, he, I mean, to think that you're second in this long as a convertible play. Because Vernon Adams, they just wanted to make sure once you go off by the trainers coming out, you have to sit out for three plays. He's back in there. He wanted to make sure he had sat out the three. Adams thought about going deep. Now he's going to look the other way down.
It is a big one because there's time on the clock to take advantage of a third turnover. One on the teams for the Riders, one on defense, and then this one, a second on defense. Adams has lots of time. He, he climbs up in the pocket here a second and, and finds a throwing lane. But he is thrown into a lot of coverage over there. Clark comes up with it. It's Clark who made that great play in the end zone against Whitehead earlier in the half. I think Rick Campbell wants to challenge the hit on Vernon Adams Ooh. after the play, and he's livid. Well, this would be something, wouldn't it? BC is challenging that there was roughing the passer on the play. We'll review the play. These two coaches, by the way, combined 0 for 4 on challenges this season. Let's take a look at, at Vernon Adams here because the ball's gone. Now, Pete Robinson's... What's that about? Now, uh, Pete Robinson's trying to block him because it's an interception. And so he's a, he's allowed to do that down the field. So can that be called roughing the pass? No, no, no. It's it's either an illegal block. That's still out of the ball. That's still out of the ball. That's still out of the ball. Hey, hey, leave him alone. Is this a challenge out of desperation here? Maybe that he may look back on and well, they, regret. You know, yeah, like this. Th this was Ver this was Vernon Adams going down to try and make a tackle. Yeah, the roughing the passer would have been completely out of the question at that point. Didn't take him long. Let's get the call. After review, the ruling on the field stands. BC will be charged the timeout. And it wasn't. In a, a vicious hit. It was a little push. Yeah. I think, and, and, and Robertson's, uh, you know, his thought there is that he wants to block the quarterback. As a defender, when there's an interception, you've got to block the quarterback. He usually makes the tackle. First and 10 from the 46. Another completion for Dola Gala. And that's going to go for a first down. A flag at the end of the play. Two of them. It's Hellatic. He tracked down Bain after the completion, but flags in the secondary. Trash talking going on down there right now. I can right hear it the beginning of the game, right? I can hear it all the way up, up here. Major foul, blindside block. Saskatchewan number 19. 15 yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's Embolus. You can't come back towards your own line of scrimmage. That's just to the right of your screen there. Top right corner of your of your screen. Here comes Embolus back towards his own line. It was a step or two, but it was enough. He got right to the trash talk game immediately as well. Well, that's a big one. <laughs> because it definitely takes him out of field goal range. Would have been a 15-yard gain the other way. So a huge swing. First now and 25 with 91 seconds remaining in the half. They'll hand it off. Is wrapped up by Halatic after a short gain on the play, and then he'll set up second and long. Well, we've seen a physical game. Western opponents battling. It's been physical in this first half. And now I think, you know, at halftime, coaches go into the room and they say, guys, discipline, 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 discipline. It's a physical game out there. There's tons of trash talking going on. Don't be the guy that gets the after the whistle penalty. One here. Free play. Dola Gala over the middle, and that one is broken up. Oh, no. The bets that jumped early, wasn't it? Yeah, it looked like one of those. Offside. BC number 90. Five yard penalty. Repeat, second down. There he is in the neutral zone. Heads up by Dola Gala to take a shot anyway. Matthew Betts does have a sack in this first half, so he's a three-game slide where he didn't register one. He's now added to his total, 11 on the season. That leads the lead. 
Second and 16 from the BC 52. Dola Gala spins out of the pocket on the run to his left. Gets it to Bain. Up at the 45. And that'll bring up third down. And Lothar will trot out here for a deep shot. Wind if there is any, and there's not much, but if there is any wind, it's at his back. Lothar one of four from beyond 50 so far this season. His long was 54, and it was a big one. This would put them up by 14 late in the quarter. From 53, just inside the left hash, Corsak to hold. Gets it down, Lothar puts it up. Side of that goal post. Doesn't matter how he gets it in. <laughs> as long as he does. Some Riders fans are thinking watching right now. And Saskatchewan has staked themselves to a 14-point cushion late in the half. 17 of those points off turnovers. Good news for BC Vernon Adams, who left the game was yes. in the tent. Big, big, There's huge back. news. Yeah. They start on their 40 with time. This was a lucky whitehead, and he gets hammered immediately, but he was able to hang on to it. C.J. Rivas with the tackle. Well, I, I won't be surprised to see BC try and test this new lineup with, and as good as he is, and, and Derek Moncrief's one of the great sort of unicorn-type players in the CFL, but he's playing halfback now, full DB mode for Amari Henderson. Second and four, near side, McKinnis, he's got it. And he'll step out of bounds right at midfield with 27 seconds on the clock. So that what, what that means for Jason Shivers, possibly, and I don't know how many reps that Moncrief takes at halfback during the week, but he might have to go to some more zone looks and, and maybe stay out of the man-to-man -man looks. Not sure he wants the Keon Hatcher Moncrief, although, again, Moncrief is such a great athlete. I mean, he can cover, he can run. But do you put him in man-to-man -man too many times? Lions smack dab in midfield. Adams up to his right on the run. Has some room, and he's going to take off again. Adams down inside the 45. Looked like he thought about it a little bit more, but decided to step out of bounds with 20 on the clock. Now they're play away from field goal range, and they've got time to get a little closer for Sean White. But... See what happens with Adams here. See this? People are wondering why have there's been so many quarterbacks getting hurt? Because not enough of them are making that decision when a, the, the hit is coming. Make that decision and get out of bounds or get down. First and 10 from the Ryder 42. Lions offense moving quickly here. Adams in trouble. Knocked down at the 50. Big loss. C.J. Rivas causing some issues. I think Miles Brown came around on stunt as well, and he, he gets, he's part of the issue here for, it is Rivas off the edge, but number 90 is right in the face of the throwing lane. There's 22 fighting off the double team. Seven-yard loss. Adams over the middle. Hatcher goes down and gets it. At the 30, slides underneath it with two seconds on the clock. And there's the zone look from Derek Moncrief. Having Derek play a little bit of zone, and Keon goes and runs that deep curl in the zone. Moncrief 42 at the top left corner of your screen, and there's that soft spot. But what an accurate throw to protect his receiver. Lone away. Lead him down. Went and got it. Just the second catch of the game for Hatcher. Too many players in the formation. BC, five yard penalty, remains first down. So this will back Sean White up five more yards. They made a late substitution once the officials put their arms up. 
you can't run out on the field after that and they do want to be a man short but that that play to hatcher gives sean white comfortable range here and he has been money 20 in a row 21 21 in a row hit one today this is from just inside the left hash perfect from inside 50 so far this year white has it up he knocks it through as the Lions get three points back late. And the Riders will lead by 11 at halftime. Adams, a little bit of a hitch in his giddy up still. On the other side, Jake Dolagala. Not sure what more you could ask for. 11 of 15 for 161 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, started, started on BC's end of the field after the defense turnover. And throw it to Keon Schaefer Baker for his first touchdown. I mean, this is Schaefer Baker had a couple of catches early. A little bit of a lull offensively in the middle of this first half, but then a real strong finish to the first half with some big throws and receivers making plays for him down the field. Well, Gala is with Brickport. Well, Jake, the first half, I'm sure you were somewhat hoping to... For 100 now, and you're right, good news for the BC Lion fans as Vernon Adams looks like he'll be good to go. Riders will start the second half with the ball as Flintoff gets us going. Thank you very much for joining us on this Sunday evening. That's a high hop. Alford one hands it just inside his own 10. Now he looks for space. Mario Alford nowhere to go just yet eventually concedes at the 20. Dolagala 161 yards two touchdowns in the first half. Yeah he, st he started almost in the red zone with his first touchdown throw because of a turnover. The guys mentioned the points off turnovers and I, and I thought he finished real strong with some great throws that was uh, top catches in the league so far this year from Emelis. Couple touchdowns, some nice reads. Good first half for number nine. Flag was thrown on Emelis during the return, and that will back the Riders up inside their own 10 to start the third quarter. Four options out to the wide side left here for Dola Gala. That's where he looks. He'll try to set up a screen. Emelis lunges ahead, takes it outside the 15. Pretty decent pickup on first down. And for Emelis, his third catch of the ball game. Highlight reel catch in that first half, as we just showed you. This one, a little bubble screen, a couple steps off the line, and then come back. The next, the next progression from that play is the fake bubble screen and then a deep shot. Second and two. They'll give it to Morrow, trying to pick it ahead, and good push from the offensive line, and that should be enough for a rider first down. Needed two and got three. This might be a small thing, but Jake Dolagala after after this, watch watch him continue. He gives the ball up and he'll go just to the right of your screen, but he continues in the play fake like he's got the ball in his hands. And that may seem small, but for a young guy in his in his second start to be thinking to try and draw one defender if he can to hesitate on that tackle, he helps his running back out. Now they'll toss it in front to Bain. Bain wrapped up though and taken down almost immediately by Lacombo. And they're trying to calm down Banks right now. It looks like he was upset with something in that that play where it felt like he may have been held or something or he went after the officials and his teammates had to corral two-yard loss second and 12 now early in the quarter for the home side leading by 11 Dolagala far side of the field has a completion BC's defense is there though and wrap up Schaefer Baker, third catch of the game for Baker in his return to the lineup, first game of the season. Yeah, they've been easing him in. He's played two series, and then he's sit two series, and then he plays. We're tracking exactly how many series. Contact, BC number 29, 10-yard penalty. Keon Schaefer Baker gets, and 
been two on, two off. So trying to ease him back. Coming off hip surgery, if you missed the first half, he's making his debut almost 1,000 yards last year. At 960 yards, five touchdowns, led the team in catches and yards, and was the team's most outstanding Canadian. This is the flag that was thrown against Edwards Cooper. And that has put them in second and short. Outside, Peters wraps up his man immediately. What a tackle by Peters as Emelis had that ball, was hoping to make a move, but Gary Peters was all over him. Yeah, the BC Lions, I, you know, I, I think are, are maybe the best tackling team in the league. Uh, their secondary is outstanding. They don't miss a lot of tackles, do they? They don't, and, and you know, usually you're, you're hoping, especially on some of those bubble screens, that you make the first guy miss and get an extra four or five, but it's a very, very good tackling team. Tackling defense, BC Lions. Third and three will force Corsack to come out and kick this away. Terry Williams in the distance, waiting back at the BC 40. I'm guessing some ice packs in the first half for Mr. <laughs> Williams. If you're just joining us, he took a beating in the return game. Has the back pedal deep for this one. 57-yard kick. Williams now turns it up the middle of the field. Nice spin move and works it all the way outside the 40. Pretty decent return for Terry Williams and pretty decent field position for Vernon Adams. Banged up in the first half, but back and ready to go here in the second. First half for Vernon Adams, Jr.? Well, he, he looked great at times. I mean, and dialed in, as a matter of fact, taking over from that Calgary game and just carrying on with some great momentum after four touchdowns in the game last week against Calgary. He finding his target, seeing the field. He did get nicked on a hit. That was a bust. Here comes the hit. It was Derek Moncrief. Came back after that through this pick. And then got him into field goal range to end the half. Finished that first half with 200 yards passing. Starts this one with a completion here. And she gets it into Hollins, who, as we talked about, first 100-yard game of the year for Hollins. And they've got different guys who can explode on different nights. Hatcher last week, Hollins this week. So basically, Adams on pace for 400 yards passing, and, and that is without any sort of running game. I mean, Mizell has four carries for nine yards so far. The offense has been from the arm of Vernon Adams Jr. Or will they look to Mizell here in second and two? They do. Trying to stretch it out on the far side of the field, but the Riders are there. Nothing Larry opened Dean. up. And Larry Dean is able to take him down. Just great discussion this week with Larry Dean and the leadership skills that he brings. Number 11 right in the middle of your screen there. Top of your screen, and he just Scrapes to the ball and gets there. And I, I loved his, one of his quotes that he gave us this week, keep the main thing the main thing. <laughs> Which I think means stay focused. Stay focused, keep it simple. Keep the main thing the main thing. Third and short. Look at this. Davis is going to drop back down the field for Katoy. Broken up by Marshall. Some trickery in midfield. Backfires for BC. Thing <laughs> is get the stop on that play and they get it. Almost <laughs> took that away. A gift card to every time the Riders score a touchdown. We've already given away $3,000. So it's an exciting night for us. Yeah, busy night for you indeed. I know that this partnership has been a successful one with the CFL and TSN and Save on Foods for five years now. Uh, you're a huge CFL fan yourself. What do you plan for the rest of the season? Well, we're very we're big CFL fans, and by the way, we're big TSN fan, fans as well. So, so we have another deal like this happening in September in Edmonton and in October in Winnipeg. So we're very excited about that. We're also excited to be part of the communities, to give a little extra to every community that we're in, and of course, supply our customers with great snacks for every CFL game. So come by, save on food for your snacks, and support the CFL, the greatest football league in the world. Well, thanks so much. I think you're going to get a Saskatchewan Thank you.
you. Well said. That was I, I, awesome. I want to meet that guy because I've worked at Save on Foods in two different provinces. Well, well, here's here's the thing. Every time I'm in Save on, which is all the time, that's where we do our shopping. Every, and oh, you got the helmet too. Oh, you look got, at that. You got the oh yeah, right right <laughs> off the shelves at Save on, right on the head. But every time I'm in there, I'm looking for Mr. Jones. Like I'm walking up and down the aisles with my cart, looking. Is Mr. Jones in here somewhere? <laughs> oh, say hi. Save on Foods in Cranbrook when I was in high school, in Lethbridge when I was in university, you were an employee. and Edmonton. I worked, yeah, three three different Save on Foods I worked nice. at. Yeah, that basically uh, kept me alive for about five years. Now this this gamble by BC on third down won't hurt them. It could have hurt them. Yeah. Quick two and out. Williams on the return, sliced down along the sideline. Let's take another look at that. Third down. They were in third and one situation. Davis probably could have pushed ahead. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, we saw Edmonton successfully do this. Taylor Cornelius in their first win against Hamilton. It looked like they had, they maybe had Javon Katoy in the, in the right leverage anyway. But that ball just a little bit high, and, and Nick Marshall had the best chance at it. Nick Marshall re reacting quickly because you're, you're trying to fool. The defense there and have a wide open guy. He definitely wasn't wide open. That turnover on downs, their fourth turnover of the game. The other three led to 17 points in this game for the Riders. They got away with that one and they get the ball back here on their own 20. Everybody out to the left for Adams will hand it off. Best carry of the ball game for Mizell. Eight yards. Almost doubles what he was able to accomplish so far. Last time these two teams met on the other side, Jamal Morrill ran for 11 yards on 12 carries. So running the ball against either of these teams has been difficult. Well, Micah Johnson's in there. Uh, he, he's going to always make it tough on the run game. Larry Dean, as you already mentioned, a great leader. 100 game for Larry Dean. Need two more yards here. Mizell stands in behind Adams, takes it, runs into a wall, and is driven back by the Riders again. Nowhere to go for Taquan Mizell. Wow, that wasn't even close. No, nope, gap cancellation, and they bring in Javon Katoy to get a block. He, he, that block was taken on. That was Pete Robertson who took on the block of Javon Katoy and just ran right through it. Clintoff gets it away. Alford has the back pedal to his 30. 56 yard kick and what a tackle. He is taken down immediately by Rene. Looking for two yards. Ended up losing three. Robertson, Brown, Moncrief there to stop him. Gadwin gets the ball back here. This drive will start on their own 34. Dola Gallup, 14 to 20 for 166 yards and two touchdowns. They'll hand it off in a nice burst by Morrow. All the way ahead for a first down for Saskatchewan. And that is his most successful rush attempt of the ball game. Nice second level block from Evan Johnson who's going to step out and get the block on the linebacker. I believe it's Bola Combo that he's going to get. He steps out, gets that second level block on the linebacker and gives his running back a chance to pick up another 6-7. 14 yards, longest run of the ball game on either side. See, we talk about good blocks with the old line occasionally. It happens. Bola Gallo side of the field gets it there in time tackle broken and that is the first catch of the game for Picton yeah, Mitch Picton coming back on the roster for this one as well he's a wide out here he's playing if they give a, a break to Kian uh, Schaefer Baker so Schaefer Baker sits out they put Picton on he's coming off a concussion and passed all the protocols back in the lineup tonight 
Pennington with a touchdown already on the season. First and 10 here on the BC 52. Golagala keeps this one and takes off. Look at the big fella. Takes it down inside the 40. Made that look easy. All in the play fake. So a couple of good runs here from Jamal Morrow. Morrow's got the good inside runs earlier this. And look at the influence 25 had on that play. Entire defensive front seven for the Lions just collapsed down on Jamal Morrow, leaving the edge open for Dolagala. Nice decision making from Dolagala. Has this drive up to the BC 40. Low snap, goes and gets it, hands it off to Morrow. Menard, Holatic, and Lacombo are there to hold them to three. I think Ryan Phillips likes three on, on first down. I think he, he'll take that. Yeah, well, I don't. I, he didn't have the reaction that he looked like three was too many. For, for a loss of three. <laughs> yes. yeah. Boy, this this defense had. They've had a couple of games like their two losses, but in their wins, they have been dominant. Both of their losses have come on the road. Dola Gala with pressure coming right up the middle. The second wild catch of the game from Emelis. Well, this one is Emelis going after the football, not just high point, but going after it. Looked like that was intercepted. What a great look at it from field level. And it's tough to get much better than that. And you're right, they were thinking interception because that ball was just hanging up there. Absolutely. I mean, and that's that's a lesson for DBs. Don't wait for it because you wait for it. Someone's going to cut in front of you. A three touchdown game for Dola Gala. And Emelis goes over 100 yards. Lothar for one more. Perfect. And the Riders lead the Lions 31 13. Courtesy there. Other ideas hauls it in. His turn to put the Lions to sleep. First 100 yard gain, and we're just in the third quarter here for Sam Emelis. That was the first half of spectacular climb the ladder, high point catch, and then how about this one? Stealing it from Marcus Sales. Putting on a show tonight. Packet transfer là bas. Packet transfer. Shout out to Mega Fabreville. Fourth touchdown of the season for Emelis. The other three came in the same game. Now here's Williams. A little bit of a stumble, but stays on his feet now. Finally taken down. Just outside the 35. Or he might have had something to say about that. You know, I was looking at Sam Emelis' numbers coming in, and he had 30 catches for 471 yards, so just below that 1,000-yard pace at the midway point of the season. I thought, you know, he needs he's averaging about 52 yards a game. He, if he averaged about four more per game, he would be in that 1,000-yard category. And he just blew that out of his So this helps then. Eh? This, this changes the map. Let's put it that way. Still a long way to go in this one for a pretty deadly offense. The BC Lions held in check so far tonight. Adams is going to try to respond immediately down the field. Hollins was tied up there with Jeremy Clark and couldn't run underneath that one. Out on the outside, press coverage. Just a lot of outside release. Pretty good tracking there from. He's had he's had a good had a game. game. Jeremy Clark has made some. Broke up what would have been a touchdown to Lucky Whitehead has an interception and they'll play that very well. Makes 
some very good plays tonight. Second and ten for Adams. Pressure right up the middle. He's in trouble. They got him again. Riders defense feasting on Vernon Adams again tonight. Discipline pass rush this time from Larry Dean. Everybody's got their assignment here, but watch Larry Dean come around this way and then have contain and not give it up. If Dean gives it up, there's an escape lane. See, so he works outside and takes away the escape lane from Vernon Adams Jr. Game 100 for Larry Dean. He's got himself a sack. It's his second of the year. And the Riders' defense has just simply came to play so far here tonight. Here's Alford. He'll be driven back after a 42-yard kick by Flintoff. And the Riders' offense has a chance to come out here and start to munch up some of this clock. have been very interesting so far this year when they win they usually win pretty big and their two losses it's kind of been a disaster minus 57 minus 57 in two losses plus 137 in seven wins their wins are on average by 19.5 points per game now they'll hand it off to Morrow gets about half of what they need on that first down carry well, the two losses against pretty good teams, too, Toronto and, and Winnipeg. But, yeah. And they're going to have to try and get back in this one without Matthew Betts. We're hearing that he is on the sideline with a hand or finger injury of some kind. Questionable to return at this point. And he had one tonight. 11 on the year. Been slowed down, but it was red hot for that. And still on pace for 20. And he's been close a few other times, too. The Legala. That one broken up. Flag on the play, though. And was Edwards Cooper impeding on Tevin Jones. I think that would say yes. Yeah. Defensive pass interference. BC number 29. A 10 yard penalty automatic first down yeah that, that was just below us and I, I watched that play from start to finish he just hung on a little too long it's to the left of your screen here and it wasn't it wasn't the hand that, that came across to knock the ball down it was the uh, the right hand that was holding the jersey the whole way on that on that slammer up ninth penalty of the game against the lions up this time back to the line of scrimmage not much further Rugamba Halatic Menard in the area talk to Jake Dolagala today or this week before this game tonight talking about the playbook in Kelly Jeffrey's calls and how how Kelly Jeffrey might call it differently for him than Mason Fine. He said, no, not really. No. You know, they said the most the playbook was basically designed for those two with those two guys in mind. Dolagala now takes off right up the middle, tracked down from behind, but he's got a first down. Sahamo eventually got him, but a nice design to run by the quarterback. Kelly Jeffrey didn't have Trevor Harris when he was putting together the playbook at first it was Dola Gala and Mason Fine and he had them in mind that's a nice quarterback draw and CM uh Sumi Tehama does track him down from behind but not until he gets the first two two good young coordinators young in age but young in, in CFL experience Dola Gala down the field heaves one up and that would have had to have go-go gadget arms to get to that. But with the way he's played tonight, I kind of thought he'd he take he's, off and fly up there and get it. You, you started the expectation. The bar goes up, doesn't it? You make a couple of plays like that, the bar starts going up. On How it. did he not haul that in? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's one thing to do with Give him credit. He has not been afraid to get this ball down the Ab field. Absolutely. Taking his shots. I love it. Against a pretty good secondary. Final play of the third quarter. They'll hand it off. And Bain really nowhere to go. 
Sadiq makes the tackle. And we've got pushing and shoving down inside the 30 and a rider laying on the field. But that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Big fourth quarter looming here. Can the riders hang on against the BC Lions if their defense... And number 89, Keen Schaefer. Awesome day here at Mosaic, family day, the kids are out. They had people dancing, all the kids dancing at halftime. And then before the game, they had the football. This is Liam Abig. And I'll tell you what, put him on your fantasy. This is the Adam Badgers versus the Adam Ticats in Saskatchewan minor football. I just think he's now on the scouting list of a couple of teams. Yeah, he was neglisted at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, great, great crowd here. We mentioned at Mosaic, but lots of families here in attendance. And I mean, from a rider's perspective, they've obviously loved what they've seen so far in this game, but still 15 minutes to go. Poor sack. Oh, what a kick. Williams takes it, bobbles it. It's back up to the 10. Obviously a flag on that play. You know, it's a nice night because the timing of the game, right? As a yeah. father of some young kids myself, we love the 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock starts because you get the family out still home for a decent bedtime tonight unless you're drinking a bottle of Pepsi like her. <laughs> <laughs> Huge mistake, parents. She's not going to sleep till midnight. <laughs> no, it's, it's great. And it's a packed house and a loud crowd. and. Get them, get them started as CFL fans real early. It's a family affair here in Saskatchewan as it is in other cities like Winnipeg and Alberta. And I know they're struggling a bit in Edmonton, but make it a family affair. Everyone's welcome and watch some good football. Vernon Adams now trying to get his team back in this football game. Goes through his running back, Mizell. Broke one tackle. Marshall is there, though, and forces him out of bounds. And it kind of eliminates any sort of error or chance here. The sense, sense of urgency now has got to pick up for Vernon Adams and You're down eight pushing the ball. Right. Yeah. Doesn't mean you don't have you don't have to abandon your offensive game plan completely. Just that sense of urgency. Inside of third down, inside of two yards, you're probably going to go for it. Just 25 yards for Hatcher so far tonight. Adams under pressure, out to the right, drops it off. And that won't be enough, it'll be close. Depends on the spot here, Mizell, pretty decent spot. I think still just short. Short by inches. Inches short. Inches again, this is short yardage automatically down by 18. sort of forward progress by Davis into the game here should be enough. But if the Riders defense can get this ball back, Mosaic will erupt. Third and inches for Davis. That'll do it. Comfortably gets it. We got a coach. at it here right behind Gogger right straight up the middle yeah right in right in behind his center and in, in Michael Kojur and, and saying sometimes you you want to be over the top sometimes you want to go down and just kind of root it out when it's inches just root it out behind your your big center did I say Gogger yeah I did say Gogger he's on the he's on the other side he's on the other side side now we got it we got it straight now four years but yes Lions. now here's Adams he's got a completion and that is a critical completion for Adams and there's Hatcher 16 yards his second longest reception of the night and he's limping again this time it looks like I'm sure which one of the two legs he, he is Hatcher on the inside Change motion with Lucky Whitehead pushes to the out on Micah Tights and 
down nicely. Four receivers wide side left of Adams. And he's going to look down the field over the middle. Hatcher can't haul it in with stumbling against Dolkey. Couldn't get it cleanly. That would have been huge. Well, he yeah, he got tied up or stumbled on the road and then recovered in time to find it again. I, I thought for sure this was just going to drop to the ground, but he... He recovers and, and finds the football it just arrives just as he puts his hands up to see the little bit of a little bit of contact. He recovered to find it again. Just couldn't hang on. Second and ten. Crowd of Mosaic will get behind their defense here. To the right, down the field, Hollins drops it in there perfectly. One of the best passes of the night from Vernon Adams. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree because there, there was some defenders over there. And every time that Vernon Adams Jr. throws the football tonight in this second half, he's limping back to the huddle. So that Charlie horse or whatever he had on that hit from Moncrief in the first half is starting to affect him. But it didn't affect that throw. That was outstanding. A little bit of a limp after everyone. Down to the rider, 41 for Adams. Looks to his left, throws that way. Hollins again, and he's got it again. Alex Hollins going to work. Catch. Accuracy, accuracy, accuracy for Vernon Adams Jr. He needs, when he's throwing the ball with this type of accuracy, he just needs his receiver to get the right leverage, either outside shoulder or inside shoulder, depending on the route. And Hollins gets it done there. Look at this throw. There's no chance. He can't cover it better for C.J. Rivas. He's right there, but he can't get to the ball because the throw is so accurate. Hey, water! A hundred. 70 yards for Keon Hatcher last week. How does 161 for Holland sound this week? We talked to Hatcher about it. And I said, you know, this last week was your week. I mean, it was that big 170. So yeah, but we got playmakers across the board and it depends on what they do coverage wise. Maybe it'll be Holland's turn or they only have Dominic Rimes in the lineup right now. They're going to put him, give him a couple more weeks to rest. They love to have them, but there's other guys who can make big plays, and they need one here. First and ten from the rider 11, trying to climb back into this ball game. Adams fakes it. Now he'll lay one out there, almost intercepted. Clark already has one tonight, and he was there to break that up. Yeah, he was sitting on that outside. This is the this is the road here. It's going to be a, an out route to the sideline, and the pressure kind of forces a throw from deep in the pocket. I don't think Adams Jr. wanted to make because you saw Jeremy Clark just sit underneath it. We mentioned he's having a pretty good game tonight in the right position again. This might be his best game of the season. Agreed. Second and ten. in the slot to the right for Adams. One-on-one on one down here. Looks to the corner for Hatcher. Did he haul that in? Yes, touchdown Lions. He did, but there's a flag right at the edge of the end zone, and we'll have to sort this one out. Defensive pass interference. Saskatchewan number 21. That penalty be declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. Just snuck that one in there, didn't he? Again, bang on throw. He had a one-on-one -on, -one on the backside with Lucky Whitehead. Chose to go to the corner to the wide side of the field. He had a matchup with backup Nelson Lacombo in there playing DB, and he just misses it. That's three insanely accurate throws Absolutely. by Adams on this drive. On one leg. Sean White for one more. And don't go anywhere. BC Lions are back 
within 11. A nine-play, 91-yard drive that ends with some fancy footwork from Keon Hatcher as he finds his third touchdown of the year. Wrapped up for the entire night. Yeah, Nelson Lacombo is going to be in coverage here. He's got the right leverage, but he takes that peek into the backfield. When you look in the backfield and you've got man-to-man, -man, you're going to lose your man. And that's when he loses his outside leverage and lets Hatcher get to that corner. He'll learn that. Great athlete. Lacombo has got a great future ahead of him. A little bit sidetracked because of an injury right out of the draft. But, man, they, he's going to be a player. He just has to learn and keep his eyes on his, his guy. Mauro Alford takes it at the 10. Stays on his feet just shy of the 40. And that is where the Riders will get the ball. The lead is now 11. After this one dropped into the hands of Keon Hatcher perfectly. And tonight here at Mosaic, and that brings us to your Coors Light moment of chill. And their mother, Anne Marie Boncochi, in the house. Got the old split, split jersey <laughs> slash shirt there. Well, two great players and great athletes. I mean, I mentioned Bo. Fourth in the league coming into tonight in defensive plays. And Nelson is just a great athlete. And, and you know, a top draft pick that, that tore his Achilles in that first season. Second yeah. overall. Yes, yeah. had to recover from that. I mean, top U Sports defensive player one year playing at the University of Saskatchewan. Was so excited to be drafted here to Saskatchewan. Playing for Scott Flory up there with the Huskies. and. Tell you what, it was. It's, it set his career back a little bit, but he's going to be a player. He's going to be a starter in the league, and a lot of good DBs have given up a touchdown to Keon Hatcher. Yeah, that's true. Dolly Gala, second and ten, tight window, coming back and helping out with his receiver, and that'll go for a first down to Schaefer Baker. That's exactly what it was, Dustin. This is Schaefer Baker coming back to his quarterback in between the window. He has to come back and fight back for that, or it might have been intercepted. Much 33 Recumba, he's got a chance to break back at that, and Schaefer Baker beat him to the spot. That's a huge play. Because if they go to two and out there, BC gets the ball back with the momentum, a ton of time left. Instead, it's a fresh set of downs on their own 51. Morrow scoots over to the right of his quarterback. Pretty good pickup on first down for Jamal Morrow. At least six, maybe seven. Shaver Baker took a rest in the last couple of series. That's why we saw Mitch Picton on the field. So he's got fresh legs. I think it's a smart thing for Coach Dickinson to do is to ease him back in the lineup. Don't try to overwork him and then have an, that injury creep back into it. Big second down here. Riders need four. Dola Gala, five-man rush. Gets it away down the field. looked like he was going to run a sort of an inside route and then went deep on Gary Peters and he was in behind coverage. I thought Dola Gallup put what he had to do on this throw was to put some air under it and he did that. It was just over that outside shoulder and Tevin Jones just couldn't get there. He throws a high ball, doesn't he? Well, purposely. Yeah. Drop on it that up one, yeah. over the bucket to try and let his receiver give him time to run under it. He needed just an extra second. BC down 11, about to get this ball back. Corsak waits, takes the snap cleanly, gets it away, angles it to drop just inside the 10. 42 yard kick, a beauty. Jones. Oh. 
almost had it. And what a career it has been. For more on that, let's send it down to Britt Dorn. Yeah, he was pretty excited when he found out it was 100. He actually had no idea, and he actually turned 35 earlier this month. So I asked about becoming, you know, one of the veterans amongst league right now. He said, well, my mentality that somebody once told me was that you're the youngest in this moment that you'll ever be. So I live by that. He said also, age comes with wisdom. So I'm happy to get older in this league. Head coach Craig Dickinson had nothing but great things to say about the leader that he is amongst this team. He also said, hey, he has a future in coaching when he wants to finish his playing career. I did ask him, after 100 starts, do you still get nervous? And he told me, I'll tell you this, adrenaline, that rush is what keeps you on your toes 100 games in. And on the blitz on this last play, Britt, and didn't get home on this one because he got pushed to the outside, but they threw it right in behind him. But I'll tell you what, I, I love that quote. In this moment, you're the youngest you'll ever be. Yeah, I was older, or I was younger when this game started tonight, right? Here's Adams. Down the field. Again, lucky white hand. There he is. Lucky's going to take it to the 20. The race is on, and he's out of here. Touchdown, BC. Lucky white hand to the house. And the Lions aren't done yet. This BC Lion team is explosive. Their quarterback is gutting it out. He took another big hit. Vernon Adams Jr. pays the price. I believe Larry Dean again on a blitz. He gets there. sandwich I don't think there was any malicious intent there but it was late and that penalty flag came out but it didn't matter because lucky whitehead in behind coverage and he's got his 30 plus yarder he did 78 yards to lucky whitehead Vernon Adams closing in on a 400 yard passing game while limping for the majority of it second straight game with a touchdown for lucky and now they'll go for two to make it a three-point game. Roughing the passer has shortened things up here a bit for Davis. Can he find the end zone? We'll try to string it up. Now turns it in. No. Oh, what a stop, Larry Dean. Among others are there. And the Riders hang on to a five-point lead. Yeah, that was all Dean. That was a scrape to the play. He didn't get home in time on the blitz. Gave up a touchdown. Every player has been in the situation where they want the next play. The next play is the most important. Big two points on the line, and Larry Dean scrapes to it and denies Dom Davis. 31-26. The Riders pretty much only play close ball games at home. Let's go back to the touchdown right here from Lucky Whitehead. He's got that change motion, little waggle motion towards the line of scrimmage, and then away he goes, and he is way in behind cover. Let's go! Let's fucking go! And then Larry Dean on the two-point keeps it a five-point game which is huge. You know who else was in on this? Jeremy Clark. Got his leg wrapped up, and that's the great game from Clark that continues. They keep it a five-point game, which is very important. Bertrand Dawn on the return, steps out of bounds, and it gets blown down just outside the 31, but then a flag at the end of the play as he was hit after. That's a, that's a tough leg to see. The whistles had blown, but he kept going and then was hit at the end of the play. Well, you know, he kept running. He might have been hit inbounds, but that, that's a tough one. Yeah, I was going to say, they're picking up the flag, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, that that's it's hard to judge when you... One one player with the ball doesn't hear the whistle. Neither does the tackler know that the whistle's been blown, that he stepped out there. Because he was still in bounds on that hit and still running. But they picked it up. Never happened. Pretend it didn't exist. <laughs> Dola Gala could use a drive here. 
Less than six minutes left. His team hanging on by five against the Lions. Three-man rush. Dropped just one in there, and that was close. TJ Lee was lurking. Looking for his second interception of the year. Yeah, he was going one-on-one -on -one here with, with Bain and, and a little change motion again with on the, the, the corner route, but you see how TJ Lee ra basically ran the route for him, got out there over top of that and was strictly playing the ball. A little push by Bain at the end might have helped him not be able to get his hands on it. Second and ten now, big down here. Four options out to the left for Dola Gal. Looks to the right. Now comes over the middle, and that one off the fingertips of Stearns, and a two and out for the Riders. Hard to say if Stearns could have turned the corner here if he catches this. It's a little bit high. Climbs the ladder. He's not. He's not a real tall guy at five foot nine. He's one of those little scat receivers that great quickness. But Bola Combo was right beside him. So third and ten. Corsack stands just outside his own twenty. It's been a rough night for Terry Williams as he's been roughed up a number of times. A big return here would go a long way. Takes it just inside the 35, 41-yard kick. And Williams takes it back just outside the 40. Well, we are not yet done week 11, but here's a look at week 12. CFL and TSN continues next week with a full slate of games beginning with Thursday night football showdown between the Alouettes and Blue Bombers. Tune in at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on TSN. Congratulations to the Elks getting their first win. Not, this at, week. not at home, though. Not at home. They'll look for that a week from tonight. There's Vernon Adams. 398 yards. His career high is 488. That was against Winnipeg back in September of 2019. They've been rolling because he got some more in them. First and 10 from the BC 42. Adams over the middle. Big one all the way down to the 50 to Hatcher again. And Keon Hatcher has been unleashed here in the fourth quarter. Boy, he's good at this throw, too. I mean, we've seen some great corner route throws from number three, but this dig route into, into the danger area, which is right about here, he's got to protect his receiver on those, keep it low, and sometimes rolling away. Third 400-yard game of Adams' career to Whitehead, and he's got it, and that's close to another first down as the Lions continue to march. Lucky Whitehead, like Hollins, over 100 yards tonight. That's where that two-point convert comes in because they're in field goal range now. Had they made the two-point convert, they don't make it, so now Saskatchewan's thinking, that's okay, we just need to stop at some point. Jordan Maximix got other plans. Second and short. This time straight ahead for Davis. And that'll be a first down for the visitors. There's Adams. He's had that limp for the entire second half, but he's worked some magic. Timeout, Saskatchewan. Use it or lose it. Trying to slow things down here as well. Play out with 3.02 on the clock. Might as well use it. Adams is now at 4.27. Timer! Yeah. Timer! Please reset the clock to 3.08. Dola Gallo on the other side has three touchdown passes himself. Let's run, let's run. That has been an exciting, great football game, and Jason Shivers now, he can give up those chunk yards that he just gave up in the last two throws, but what he needs now is he just gets to stop it because at this time in the game, I'm sure Rick Campbell takes the three. First and 10 from the rider, 37. Four receivers to the left for Adams. He's going to throw to the right, down the field! Almost intercepted! And finally it falls incomplete! Marshall almost had it! Then I thought it might have dropped down to Lucky on the ground! Straight one-on-one, -on -one. Lucky Whitehead press coverage from Nick Marshall.
Marshall. Man, I can I've watched this all game long. I'll just watch these matchups all game long. And DB's up there in press. Marshall had a shot at it, and it did almost tip down a seven, didn't it? Oh. <laughs> down. Which way is this flag going? This is big. This is big. If this is against Holding. the Lions. BC number 59. Wow. 10 yard penalty. Remains second down. He's had some issues. Third flag of the game on Perkins. Out of Texas. Import right tackle. Have Can't. his issues. Cancel the rest of your plans here for the night. We got two and a half left. Back. Ken Perkins has had his struggles in this game tonight. That was Anthony Miller on one. That's the hold and put the Lions back out of field goal range. Second and 20 for an offense that has picked up some big chunks so far here tonight. Adams gets it away. That is caught and held on to by McKinnis. Adams is down, and there are flags by the quarterback. Roughing the passer. Oh boy. Major foul, roughing the passer. Saskatchewan number 91. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Let's take a look right at your screen. 91 working on Perkins again. Ball's gone and a hit right in the middle of the back. Unnecessary. Here comes around the edge. Gives them life again. First and ten from the rider, 23 for Adams. Back pedals in the pocket. Now it's going to look towards Hatcher in the end zone. Not this time. Looked like he had it. Couldn't hang on. That close to a lead for BC. Yeah, Hatcher's a three to the trip side this time and Jeremy Clark is sitting up high at the corner right and he wants to cut underneath and then stumble. That leaves Dolphy in a chase position from the middle in the safety spot and he can't get there in time and Hatcher just slips through his fingers. Ooh. Second and ten on the eighth play of the drive for the Lions. Just over two minutes remaining they're down five Adams in trouble find some space cannot find a man though incomplete to Katoy and that'll bring up third down and they will trot Sean White out here down five with 209 left yeah and I think with 209 left you get if you get a two and out from your defense you get a chance and then all you need is a field goal so Rick Campbell and it's third and ten. It's not like it's third and two. Or, no, exactly. It's, you know, third and two or less. He, he's going for it. But here, you take the three, you make it a two-point game. You need your defense to get a two and out if you're Rick Campbell. White has hit 22 in a row. Make it 23 in a row for Sean White. And we have a two. Six of the last seven home games for the Riders have been decided by two points or less. BC trying to keep pace with the Bombers in the West. Saskatchewan holding on to that third playoff position right now. I know we're just at the midway point, but looking at Calgary behind them, a win away. And now with the Elks getting their first win, just two wins back of Calgary with the Labor Day back-to-back -back coming up around the corner. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, it is interesting, but, I, you know, great decision by Rick Campbell there. Now he relies on his kick team and defense. Remember, Mario Alford's back there. Yeah, he's pretty good. He gets to, he gets even to half field or close. 
and you're a, you're a first down away from getting that field goal back. The Lions have outscored the Riders 16 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Their defense has stepped up here late, and they will hope they can do it again. Alford bubbles it. Picks it up, though, up to the 20. Mario Alford to the 30, no further. Stopped dead in his tracks, and that is where the Riders will have it with 2.01 left. A drive ends the game. You're in start number two. Here's the ball, son. <laughs> Go get it done. What a spot to be in if you're Jake Dolagala. Oh, and by the way, it's a pretty good defense. You gotta navigate. 227 yards, three touchdowns for Dolagala tonight. Needs to put together a bit of a drive here. On the run to his right, hesitates, tried to get away, but is wrapped up and taken down by Josh Woods. By the way, Matthew Betts, who went out of the game for a while with what we heard was out. BC. What we heard was a hand injury, was back in for this key play here. Big tackle by Josh Woods. BC uses a timeout. Stops the clock with 154 remaining. And here, Coach Dickinson going on the headset over the possible scenarios that are coming up in the next 154. And into the huddle late here. Flip, flip. Seven for 18 on second down so far tonight for Dola Gala and the Riders. None bigger than this. Second and 10 for Saskatchewan. Looking for a first down. Dola Gala on the run. Out to his left. Throws on the far side. Is that hold in? It looks like it is. Picked in saying yes. Officials are still discussing it. Let's get a look. Look on the run, Dolagala, nice throw against the flow, and did Picton get his foot in bounds? Looks like the left foot drags before the right foot hits. Looks like a catch. The previous play is under review by the command center. And I, I wonder if he had full possession by the time the left foot came up. A challenge. Mike, I can't get in, you can't get any closer than this. Maybe this angle gives us a better look. Tough to see from there. So it's ruled a catch on the field. They'd have to see enough evidence to overturn it. Looked like the left foot touched down. Right there. So does he have possession right now? Because that left foot has already touched. Saw BC sidelines in a bit of a bobble. Well, I'll put it from that angle. Yeah. You can't. You, I don't think you can overturn it from that angle because you have to have conclusive evidence that he juggled it. Now that front look may be able to be coordinated to get it in BC's favor here, and I think that's what they're trying to sell on the sideline is the juggle, uh, a, a juggle, and then the left foot comes up, the juggle, and the right foot touches the sideline. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Let's take, a, let's take another look here. Take a little bit of a tighter peek at this. We've kind of blown up the picture here, too. So, foot's down. He's got it now. Yeah, we lose the feet. I'm glad I'm not the guy making the decision on this one. Well, again, the ruling on the field was catch. That's important.
Well, this is a huge first down if they get it. Let's find out. Uh, after review by the command center, the ruling on the field stands of a completed count. Wow, what a play by Dola Gala just to get it over there to Pickton. We haven't really talked about that. Great job by Pickton, but Dola Gala on the run. And I would tell you, if you're a Lions fan, if that was ruled on the field as out of bounds, it would have stayed, stayed as well. Yeah. yeah. So first and 10, now on the rider 43. T.J. Lee was right there, and that'll set up second and long with 144 on the clock. Yeah, the veteran T.J. Lee just played the play. He just decided, look, they're going to run on this first down. There's no question. They want to grind the clock. They're going to run it. It's a safe play. I'm going to leave all my coverage responsibilities, go straight to the backfield, and tackle the guy. Okay, that's what went through T.J. Lee's mind, and that's what's <laughs> And it works. <laughs> Sometimes when you envision something that way, it works out. Clock ticks, though. Second and 14 for Dola Gala. A minute and 20 seconds left in the game, and flags as this ball is snapped. Did they not get it off in time? Ooh, that's loss of down. Time count violation. Saskatchewan number nine. Penalty is loss of down. A tough one. But you have a timeout. Could have called the timeout there. To help him out as that clock ticked down. So third and 14. Dickinson not happy, I think. And BC will get the ball back with over a minute remaining. Williams waits for this. Takes it cleanly just inside the 30. All the way back out to about the 41 after a 44-yard kick. And Vernon Adams has a chance to lead a game-winning drive and at least get to field position for Sean White, which is about 30 yards from where he is right now. John White's longest on the season so far this year, 51 yards. Career long, 55. He's perfect from inside 50 so far this year. One for two beyond 50. They gotta get there first though. First and 10 for the Lions on their own 42. Adams out of the pocket. Flag as he throws. Incomplete anyway, but looked like there's a hole. And is that on Perkins again? Holding 59. Oh boy. BC. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Texas is having a tough night. He is having a tough night on Anthony Lanier. That was a grab around the neck, a grab from behind. I mean. First and 20. Down by two on their own 32. Adams from the pocket. Looking for a Hatcher. Incomplete. Dulkey came across. Hatcher couldn't get there. Second and 20. Trying to knife it in there. Dulkey closing quickly. That had, that had a collision all over. That's cover two men. Nelson Lacombo underneath it with help over the top from Dulkey, who's had himself a good game as well. Crowd at Mosaic to their feet as their riders look to hang on. Second and 20 for Adams. Gets this away over the middle for Hatcher, broken up again! Deontay Williams is there, and that'll bring up third and 20. They gotta get 20. Full blitz coming, and Hatcher.
Archer's going to run that dig row. Seen a few times tonight, but it's timed up nicely by Deontay Williams. Just as the ball is arriving, he makes contact. That penalty is declined. Third down. That will bring up third down for the Riders. Dola Gala looking after the football in his second career start tonight. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. And he'll take it down. That was 11 seconds off the clock. Take it all the way down. Call a timeout. Timeout, Saskatchewan. That's their, their final timeout. And now, with eight seconds on the clock. Offer Trump Baker in his return. Dan Schaefer Baker. And the Lions play again late in the season. The Lions took game one 19 to 9, so points matter in that series as well. But then they have the, or excuse me, points won't matter in the series because they have the rubber match late in the year. Lothar from 27 to put them back up by five, and he smooths it through with five seconds the clock. Schaefer Baker back in the lineup for the first time this season. Started the game with a touchdown and the Riders offense for the first three quarters of this football game with Dexter. Yeah, I, and I think they've got something to build on with Jake Dolgala because, you know, 18 of 29, 239. He had the three touchdowns, one to Schaefer Baker, but he did not throw an interception tonight. So he protected the football, but also pushed it down the field and was aggressive at times. A couple of big, big plays from Sam Emelis tonight for the Riders. Something to build on. They go into a bye, and then they have back-to-back -back with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the Labor Day matchup. And then 
the rematch. What a way to go into a box with your biggest, most impressive victory of the season. I think that was MLS just saying, yes, throw it to me. <laughs> 106 yards and a touchdown. Two catches, that would be worthy of an honor roll somewhere. Now Lothar, five seconds on the clock. Hammers it away one more time. Does Terry Williams have a miracle? He will take a knee immediately. And will set things up for Vernon Adams one last time. Well, often you have a play that you work on in this case, which is uh, hook and ladder. Remember the old hook and ladder? I think that was on David Letterman back in the day or something. Now, if that happens, I'm going to pass that. <laughs> so, let's, let's keep it simple. Hey, 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 you, marry you throw it up. Sometimes you throw it up to a spot and you try to tip it to a teammate behind you. They hit Lucky Whitehead for almost 80 yards on a touchdown earlier in this court. The Riders will play way back here in their secondary, 30 yards off the ball. You can pitch it, play rugby football after you get it in the open area. Is there a miracle here for Adams? Goes over the middle. That's caught by Katoy. Katoy's going to kick it. And that will be grabbed by LaCombe. to start tonight and gets the win. Good for Jake Dolagala. 239 yards passing and three touchdowns. Vernon Adams banged up on the other side but still went for 453 yards and three touchdowns himself. The Riders improved to 500 on the season and four and three versus the West. The BC Lions fall to 500 on the road this year and 7-3 and three overall, which means the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are at the top of the West. Week 11. A thriller on Sunday night at Mosaic in Regina. Second career start for Jake Dolagala, and he's got his first career victory. As the Riders stun the Lions 34-29, that'll do it for us. Sports Center with Mark Rowe and Adam Scully is there.